Hey guys, I am Charan from Just 3D Things. In this tutorial, let's take a deep dive into the fundamentals of procedural displacement in Blender. This is going to be a quick tutorial. Now let's get started by understanding what displacement is. The term displacement in Blender means shifting the mesh perpendicularly along the surface normals. Displacement only works with cycles. So let's switch the render engine to cycles. Let's add a plane and give it bunch of subdivisions because more the subdivisions, the more accurate the displacement is gonna be. Along with this, let's add a subdivision surface modifier and turn on the adaptive subdivisions. This is an experimental feature. So to change it, go to the render properties and change the feature set to experimental. Now we can check the adaptive subdivisions on. This allows nearer mesh to get more subdivisions and the far mesh to get less. To learn more about it, I will link a video in the description. Check that out for further reference. Now let's jump into the shader workspace and change the viewport to rendered view. Now in the node editor, let's add a new material and add a displacement node. This will allow us to displace the mesh according to the inputs given to the sockets. Now let's take a deep look into what each socket does in the displacement node. The first one is the height socket. This is where the displacement is determined by plugging in a texture. The height is determined by the brightness values of the given pixel at each point. The second socket is the mid level. Mid level is a value at which there is no displacement. With the default value at 0.5, any lower values will cause surface to push inwards and any higher values will push them outwards. Now let's see what I mean by this. Let's add a value node. Now let's plug the value into the height socket. When you plug the displacement into the displacement socket, you can see that nothing is happening. That is because it's only doing bump right now. To change it into displacement, go to material properties and settings and change the bump to displacement or displacement and bump. Even now you can't see anything happening. That's because the value input of height is at 0.5 and the mid level is also at 0.5. So if the height value is equal to the mid value, then there will be no displacement. Let's increase the value up. Let's say 0.7. Now you can see the plane is displacing up. Same way, let's decrease the value to 0.3. You can see that the plane is displacing down. Now let's change the mid level to 0.3. You can see there is no displacement again. That's because the value of height is at 0.3 and the mid level is also at 0.3, which means there will be no displacement. To understand this better, let's add a noise texture and change it to 2D because the displacement map is nothing but a 2D grayscale map. Let's look closely at the noise texture. According to our mid level, that is 0.5, all the values above 0.5 should displace up and all the values below 0.5 should displace down. So here in our noise texture, we have the values ranging from 0 to 1. Let's plug it to the height socket of our displacement. We can see that all the values that are brighter is popping up and the values that are lower than the given mid level is popping downwards. I am stressing this point because at the end of the day, when we make a displacement map procedurally, all the heights are determined by the brightness of the pixel and the mid level. So don't forget that. I encourage you all to play around with the textures and understand how each map works with displacement because you learn only by doing. Now that we covered the basics, let's do something more practical. So let's create a mini landscape procedurally. Select the noise texture and press Ctrl T. This will give you texture coordinate node and the mapping node. This works only if the node wrangler add-on is enabled. Enable it in the add-ons. Decrease the scale to around 1 and increase the detail to 16. And bring down the roughness a bit. This will make the noise smooth but keeps the sharpness. Now we got our basic terrain. Let's add some textures to it. I want the most of the landscape to be in green color and the mountain top to be in white color. So I need to create a mask that separates the mesh along the z-axis. We can do that by making use of separate XYZ node. This node gives us a gradient in the direction of the coordinate axis. Let's use the Z output to make the gradient along the Z axis. 
Now we can control the location of the gradient by adding or subtracting a value. Let's add a math node and change the gradient location to something more desired. Now let's add a mix RGB node and use a Z axis gradient as a mask. I want the areas with black to have a green color and places with white to have something less saturated like some white color. Now plug this into the base color of our principal BSDF shader. This already looks good. Now that we created the base of the landscape, let's add a river to it. To do that, let's add a gradient along x direction. This gradient goes from minus 1 to 1. Now let's add a absolute node. This will make the negative values positive and makes the gradient flow from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 which gives us a base mask of a river. Now we can add a subtract node to change the thickness of the river. As you can see here, the river is unnaturally straight. Let's make it naturally wiggle. To do that, let's distort the coordinate space just a bit. This technique is called domain distortion. I'll make a tutorial in the future on this topic. Now I'll show you how to achieve this wiggleness. Add a mix RGB node between texture coordinate and separate XYZ node. And also add a noise texture and plug the fact of noise into the second socket. Now you can see that the river looks not so straight. We, we can tweak this value by changing the factor in the mix RGB node. Now we have a mask for our river. This not only distorts the river but also distorts the mask of the mountain top. Let's add a color ramp and tighten up the river by dragging the white slider to somewhere near half. Now let's use this mask to change our displacement. Add a math node and change it to multiply and multiply the output of the color ramp with the noise of the previous displacement. So this is how it looks like when we visualize the displacement. This is happening because we are multiplying a gradient to the noise. Because the gradient is a range of values from 0 to 1, Whenever you multiply this to any displacement texture, the output values keep increasing from 0 till it reaches 1, like a gradual slope. So this can be helpful in making a valley. Now that we have our final displacement map, we can work on the colors. Let's make a mask for the river alone. We can do that in several ways. But one easy way is to add a greater than node. Duplicate the math node and change it to greater than. What this is doing here is, it is taking the map and searching for the values that are greater than the given threshold and it's making them white and the rest black. In this case, our threshold is going to be zero. And this is how our mask looks like. Now let's use this mask to give our river some color. Add a mix RGB node and use the mask that we created as factor. Color 1 will only be applied to the black areas. And we want all the white areas to be the terrain color that we made earlier. So change the top color to something that looks like water. I will go with blue. We can go with anything you want. And connect the terrain color to the second socket. And bam, we made it. But one thing that's missing is the variation in color of a terrain. To add the variation, let's make use of the normal Z output of the geometry node. This is the same as the normal output of the texture coordinate node. Now, to get the normal Z axis, let's add a separate XYZ node and let's see how normal Z axis looks like. With this, we can get a pretty good mask for our variation. Also, by adding a color ramp and dragging the black slider, we can control the variation. Now, let's add color to the mask and mix it with the terrain. Let's add a mix RGB node and use the mask as factor. Just like before, change the color of first socket to something like greenish yellow and connect the previous mix RGB node to the second socket. And this is how it turns out. Finally, we can add a brightness and contrast node to control the contrast of the whole diffuse color map. Let's plug this to the base color of principal BSDF node and let's see how this looks. Right now, it's too glossy. We have to change the roughness of the terrain, but we want the river to be glossy, but not the mountains. We can use the same mask that we used to color the river. And remember, pure black is 100% gloss, which means zero roughness. And pure white is 100% rough, which means zero gloss. Plug this map to the roughness socket. This will make the river 100% reflective, but the terrain 100% rough. And that's it guys, we are done with the mini stylized landscape. I hope you all found this video useful. 
If you have any doubts, feel free to put it in the comments down below. If you like this video, try turning the thumb blue and subscribe to my channel for more content. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day.